Yeah, so we are back in question, question 3. Now we are told to find the general solutions of the following homogeneous differential. They are all homogeneous differential equations because what you observe is that the right hand side in all of them, they are all zero. So they are all homogeneous differential equations. So let's start by finding the first one. So we want to find the solution of the homogeneous um, differential equation A, which says y prime prime plus 4y prime minus y equals zero. Now the first thing you want to do in trying to solve a homogeneous differential equation is you form the auxiliary equation. Now you recall, you recall in trying to form the auxiliary equation, anywhere you see y or y prime, you replace it with m. If you see y prime prime, you replace it with m squared. So if you see y prime prime prime, you replace it with m to the power 3. And then if you keep on going, if you see anything like the nth derivative of y, it should be replaced with m to the power n. So that's, that's going to be um, what's going to serve as the paradigm in trying to solve the differential equation. So, the first thing is I want to form the auxiliary equation. So to form the auxiliary equation, so I have y prime prime, so I'm going to represent it with m squared plus 4 y prime, that will be 4m, then minus, so since there's nothing here, it's like saying m to the power 0. So that's going to be 1 equals 0. So we solve this um, quadratic equation. <clears throat> when you solve the quadratic equation, what we have is, by using a quadratic formula, we're going to have m equals 2 plus or minus root 5i. Root 5i. So we're going to lay credence to um, what we said, that if our solution is m to the power of m equals alpha plus or minus beta i, as a solution of the auxiliary equation obtained from the homogeneous differential equation, then the solution of that homogeneous differential equation should be of this form. That is y equals e to the power alpha x into c1 cosine of beta x plus c2 sine of beta x. So here, our alpha here is our alpha, it is going to be our alpha. Y here is our beta. So we're going to make the substitution right based on what we've, we've just written here. So this implies that our y is going to be e to the power alpha is 2, e to the power 2x into c1 cosine of our beta is root 5, root 5x plus c2 sine of root 5x. So that's, that is the general solution of, of the first one. Now for the second one, it says, it says 2y prime prime plus 2y prime then plus y equals 0. So similarly, to solve the homogeneous um, differential equation, we're going to form the auxiliary equation. So the auxiliary equation is going to be, so anywhere we find y, we represent with m, so we have m. So prime prime, that's going to be 2, plus 2m prime, that's going to be 1, and then plus y, that's going to be 1. So this is m to the power 0, so that, that's all. Then equals, equals 0. So when we solve this using the quadratic formula, we have our m to be equal to negative half plus or minus half plus or minus half i. So here, so comparing this, comparing what we have here and what we have what we have here. So we observe that, so this implies that alpha is going to be negative half while our beta is going to be half. So based on this, we can form a general solution. So therefore, the general solution is going to be e to the power alpha x, that's minus half x, into c1 cosine of beta x, that is half x, half x, plus c2 sine of half x sorry that should be half half x and that is the general solution for that part now the next equation we want to consider is um, 2y prime prime minus 3y prime plus 4y equals 0 so I can remember that so we have 2y prime prime minus 3y prime plus 4y equals 0. Yep. 
So the same procedure you went through, you find the auxiliary equation. So the auxiliary equation is going to be 2m squared minus 3m plus 4 equals 0. So we solve this quadratic equation. When we solve the quadratic equation using the quadratic formula, so we have m equals 3 divided by 4 plus or minus root 23 all over 4i. So majorly, most times when you solve stuff like this, when you solve when you solve the differential equation, the main the main job there is trying to identify which one is alpha and then which one is which one is your beta. As far as you can identify that, then you should you should not have any problem. So so this is going to be the general solution is going to be y equals e to the power alpha x. That's three all over four x into c one cosine of root twenty three all over four x plus c2 sine of root 23 all over 4 over 4x. So this is what we have as our general solution for this other part of the differential um, equation. Now we go to part D. So part D is y prime prime. In fact, part D is, is not just a homogeneous differential, but also an initial value. We're giving some initial values here. So this is an initial value problem. So we want to find a particular solution after finding the general solution. So I can remember what we have there. So what we have there is y prime prime minus y equals 0. And then we're given the initial conditions y of 0 equals, equals 1. And then y prime of 1 equals, equals 0. So let's, let's leave this alone. That's the initial conditions we're given. So let, let's solve let's solve this so to solve this homogeneous differential like we've been doing we we'll form the auxiliary equation so the auxiliary equation is going to be m squared minus m equals zero and then when you solve this so you have um, your m to be either that's when you, when you solve this is sorry this should, this should be it should be one it shouldn't be it shouldn't be m so it should give us so when you solve it should have m plus or minus one so then you recall again anytime you have if you have distinct values say you have m1 and m2 to be your solution then the general solution is going to be y equals c1 e to the power m1x plus c2 e to the power m2x so this is this is what you what should be or what's going to be a paradigm in trying to form the general solution of this kind of type of solution um, sorry of um, homogeneous differential equation so now since we have distinct values so my general solution is going to be y equals c1 e to the power, so the first one is plus 1, so e to the power 1x plus c2 e to the power minus 1x, that's negative, negative x. So now we have the general solution of this homogeneous differential equation. Now, so now the next thing is we need to find the arbitrary constant c1 and c2. Now to find c1 and c2, I'm going to use or implement the initial conditions that I'm given. So now what the first one says is that it says when x is 0, y is 1. So it says y is 1 when x is 0. That's c1 e to the power 0, that's 1, plus c2 e to the power 0, that's 1. So this is going to be our first equation. Now for the next one, it says when we take the derivative and then find the value of the derivative at 1, we should have 0. So this is y. So y prime y prime is going to be c1 e to the power x, the derivative of e to the power negative x is negative, that will be negative c2 e to the power negative x. So it says the value when x equals 1 is 0. So we have y prime equals c1 e to the power x plus 3 e to the power negative x. So we are told to find the derivative of the value at 1 when x equals 1. When x equals 1. So that's what we want to find. So when x equals 1, so what we're going to have is y prime is going to be 0, so that's going to be c1 e to the power 1 minus c2 e to the power negative, negative 1. So we now have two equations. So the first equation that we have, which I'm going to write here, is c1 plus c2 equals 1. And then the other one is c1 e to the power 1 plus c2 divided by e equals 0. Then when we solve this, this is actually a simultaneous um, equation. So when we solve these two equations, we're going to have our c1 to be 1 all over 1 plus e squared. And then we have our c2 to be 
1 minus 1 all over 1 plus e squared. So since we have this as c1 and c2, then we can find our particular solution for y. So y is going to be so our c1, which is this. So that will be 1 all over 1 plus e squared into e to the power x. Then plus our c2, which is this. That's going to be 1 minus 1 plus e squared times e to the power negative x. And that is the particular solution of that initial value problem. And then that completes the problem.